don't fuck up. Don't fuck yourself. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Rude Cooking School podcast. I am your host, John Hauser III. And with me in the Temple of Doom is... Ever the mayor, it's a rude cooking school. Don't be a fool. Don't enjoy that gruel because you are in school. When you go to school, you get a degree and then you eat uh, high class chi. They've already hung up. They've that's already- my that's my rap for this week. Uh, thank hey, you very much. Awesome, great. I'm you know. Hey, look, they already hit play, so I got the I got the numbers. It's fine. <laughs> no, God, no. Oh no, with that, please, God, stop that. How are you, friend? I'm doing quite well. Yeah, it sounds like you're you got a lot of energy. <laughs> Does it sound like that? Because <laughs> I don't. It does when you're like hyperventilating yourself. Yeah, well, you know, you get into a hypoxic state and you you start to go through a bit of euphoria. Mm, yeah. And then you see your dead relatives, you know, kind of floating around on the screen. Wait, screen? What? Scream? Huh? On the Zoom, you know? That, nope. Don't. Oh, that's not what you're seeing right now? No. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, try it. I'm uh, No. I don't like do, hyperventilating. Do a little bit of that uh, wild country, you know, tantric uh, yoga shit. I don't even know what that is. You've never seen the documentary Wild Country on Netflix? No. Okay, John. Uh, I, no. I, I, I highly recommend you watch it because it is great. No. It is a documentary series about a yoga cult that poisons an entire town so that they can vote themselves into controlling the town. I have... I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, I know who they are. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I know who they are. I forget yeah. exactly what their name is. Bhagwan. But they were in, they were, what? The leader's name was Bhagwan. Yeah, they were in like uh, the Upper West America. Yeah, they were in uh, the Portland zone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I remember that from an episode of uh, the last podcast on the left they called sure. them. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Who, by the way, is one of my favorite podcasts. And if you like uh, creepy things or serial killers or whatever, listen to them because uh, they're probably the best at it. Did you go to see them at the Lyric Opera House? I did not. I wanted to, though. We Um, did. And it was pretty good. Did you really? Oh, shit. If I didn't know. That was the problem is I didn't know anybody to go with. Yeah. Hannah is a big fan. uh, Oh, shit. We went. Yeah. We got tickets. Yeah. I love me some Henry Zabrowski. I actually love me some Marcus Parks even better because I don't know if you've listened to Marcus's uh, uh, music podcast with his wife. That it's called No No Dogs in Space. It's amazing. Like if you like really big deep dives into punk and or alternative bands, it's fucking amazing. They've got like a six part on uh uh oh balls. Um, the re- the 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 replacements, and yep. it it's fucking incredible. Sex Pistols, Clash, fucking. Wh- which it. of that cast uh, is from that show? I enjoy on Adult Swim about the the Office, but in hell. That's that's Henry Zabrowski. That's Henry. Okay, yeah, he's funny. Yeah, he, Henry's Henry's a professional comedian. That's why. Yeah, he also was in The Wolf of Wall Street. That's right. Yeah, as the big. Fat redheaded dude. <laughs> yep, that's kind of yeah. what his, he yeah. does. <laughs> well, now he's skinny. He's he's skinny. He's oh, really? Way, way skinnier. Yeah, he's dropped a lot of weight. Hmm. Uh, but no, if 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 you like music, uh, No Dogs in Space is a really well researched because his wife, uh, Carolina Hidalgo, is a comedian and she's really funny, and she's really good at research and hmm. the research because, you know, he gets all the accolades for the show, but she does everything and he takes every chance he can be to be like no no, no her <laughs> i i take care of my show this is her show show and i'm basically the co-host but uh yeah no dogs in space if you like music is fucking great their joy cool. division their joy division series was fucking awesome like never heard of them just fuck off <laughs> um okay uh welcome to an episode of Food News. (laughs) Hey, it's Food News, and we're going to do some news. The news for you, because it's news to you. It gets worse. It it actively gets worse. It gets worse, because you're the worst. 
and the energy goes up. That's the crazy part. The energy goes up because I took a cup and I drank from the cup and it was full of sup. Wait, what's sup? Su- supper. Oh, it was a, cu- a cupper of supper? It was a cupper of supper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. Um. All right. So, uh, <laughs> oh, God. That's the worst sound ever. Oh, you're poor. Yeah. Um. I feel sorry for Hannah to hear that at certain times. Um, well, she do, she doesn't need to know that. What? Nothing. Okay. Keep going, um, please. Let's talk about what we've done in the last week. What have you eaten? What have you made that makes you happy and or sad? John, I got to grind my gears. Oh, God. Here we go. What is it? So remember when you asked the your Facebook group what we were going to eat and or make for Valentine's Day? Yeah, for Valentine's. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I posted that we were going to eat chicken nuggets and Caesar salad. I was half correct. Uh, last this past week, uh, Hannah, Hannah went to BJ's and got a three a three tray mm. of chicken nuggets. What's, what's Purdue a three? chicken nuggets? A what? A, a three tray. I don't so know what three that is. trays. Oh, Three okay. trays of chicken nuggets in a value pack. Okay, I thought that was like a, a thing, like a like you know, just like one part of the tray was like buffalo, one part was Old Bay, one part was oh gosh, that was teriyaki, be like a, a popcorn tin of chicken. Right, nuggets. exactly. That's what I thought a three tray <laughs> was. Caramel, caramel. Oh God, what nuggets. was that name? That che- noise, che- Jesus. Che- cheesy chicken nuggets, and then some buttered chicken. <laughs> yeah, nuggets. that'd be great. Anyway, I just so, invented the greatest thing ever. BJ's, you're welcome. Uh, yeah. Uh, so we got the three tray chicken nuggets. The chicken nuggets, no complaints. No. So hold notes. on, hold like, on, hold on. I'm sorry. We need to back up though. What exactly mm-hmm. is a three tray? It's just three trays of chicken. nuggets. I don't know in- what a tray of chicken nuggets is. What are you? So talking if you about? go to the grocery store, yeah, and you get a Purdue wrapped tray of chicken nuggets that are like in the either freezer or frozen or, or refrigerated section it's they literally bre- in a round tray i've never seen this it's a, re- I'm, I'm it's a rectangle I'm not- it's a rectangle tray okay. of fucking prepared chicken nuggets i'm not trying to be like <laughs> obtuse i just don't honestly know what you're talking about you're I've not never trying seen but it. you definitely are being very obtuse okay so hold on though like is it in a box or is it like in a clear thing where you see the nuggets it's, yeah it's in a tray Okay. With a clear plastic top that says right. Purdue on it. No antibiotics added. I don't think Nutrition I've ever seen label. That. Okay. Yada yada. Except so there this, were three of them. There's three and the of three of them. They're all wrapped, were wrapped in plastic. Gotcha. Yes. So we got that. And they are very they're delightful. Okay, great. You put them in, you put them in the air fryer, they crisp up nicely, crunchy actually. Sweet. Uh I tried to make a Chinese uh mustard. I failed. I added too much salt or something. It tasted like dog shit. Mm. So I threw that away. And weirdly I just made enough, a- Chinese mustard is actually I, I find it very hard to make because you think it's just the mustard powder and right. water, but it's not. No, it's not. It's actually There's really hard things. to make. Yeah. yeah. You gotta get that balance correctly. And I totally did yeah. I fucked it up. Anyway, so I threw that away and I just made a uh ketchup ranch blend. French dressing, if you will. Gross. Mm, delightful. Uh anyway, those nugs were great. But that is not what we had for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Uh, what we did wind up having for Valentine's Day, other than the Caesar salad, was a chicken lasagna that came from De Pasquale's. Okay. And I said, chicken lasagna, you say? Mm. Is this like bits of, you know, thigh meat diced up and thrown into a lasagna? Couldn't, you know, couldn't tell because, you, you know, you, you look at the lid. It just looks like a lasagna from the top. Some nudes. I would it's think awesome it'd be ground, top. right? It was ground. Okay. Uh, it's a very cheesy, very saucy, a very uh, saucy and cheesy lasagna. Was it good? But I don't know what they do, but I think they overcook it because the noodles are mush, uh, except oh. for the top layer. Wait a minute. Did you get it frozen or pre-made? It's, it's, it's pre-made. It's not like pre-cooked, but it's pre-assembled. So oh, okay. It, it, it I know what you're be, talking about parboiled how to however you want to put it but sure. like once we cooked it and it ate it like it was mushy underneath the top layer of noodle um and we both remembered simultaneously That's weird it was not the first time that we've had this experience with oh. a lasagna that came from deep Pasquale's. uh for whatever reason their shit 
below the top layer of noodle is mush. But then cheesy, delicious mush. But then but mush. Then how about the noodles <clears throat> under that first layer? Mush. Is it just everything's mush? Yeah. No, the top layer is okay, but the every, everything below it is mush. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you know, lasagna kind of is just sort of mush. Yeah, but uh, I mean, uh, I know what you're saying. The, they're, they're the good ones that I have. Give. You can you use, you use your fork. You get yes. all the layers of the nudes, and you you right. know have a nice it's bite n- to it. It's not it's not like you could take a butter knife and just right through it, right? Like yeah. there's with no give. There's there always is a no, little give. like a fork. There's no give to this thing. Right. It okay. is just mush. Mm, that's soupy almost. Oh yeah. well, that's yeah, that's a problem. I mean, delicious soupy, soupy, cheesy. So you, you bought it, it wasn't baked, you baked it, and then it was Uh just mush. Yeah. And that, and that's not going to be helped by baking off any of the excess moisture. It's just going to get more mushy. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. huh? That sucks. But, but I will say this, their, their small lasagna is enough to feed a family of 20. Yeah. Uh, and it's like $35, but it's, it's a lot of lasagna and I'm not complaining about the taste. It tastes great, but it is mush. You know what I would just do with all that shit? What's I would that? just I would just mash it all up and put it in a fucking big tortilla and make sure. <laughs> lasagna burritos. Sure. Pizza burritos. Like that sounds yeah. great. But okay, I've had their frozen ones, and their frozen ones are great. Mm-hmm. Because you just I think you just pop them in frozen and just let them go. Mm-hmm. And I guess maybe because the noodles aren't hanging around the sauce just getting completely sogged out by all the sauce and shit anyway you know what i mean like it's it's there's a difference between being frozen and then just being actively in water Mm -hmm. and being a sponge i don't know interesting i don't know that stinks i mean like you said it was delicious but it's not it's not great yeah it's not it's not the lasagna experience i would have wanted did you have bread with it what did we have with it um did you dip your I, salad in it? No. <laughs> mm. Salad was separate. It was, it, you know, it was the aperitif. Reserve. Sure. River. Hmm. Reserve, reserve. I'm actually sending my wife to uh, De Pasquale's tomorrow. My wife. My wife. Uh, also, the the prior weekend, we we did a another Saturday edition of all De Pasquale. Oops, all P. <laughs> Oops, all De Pasquale's. Nice. It was a bre- a breakfast sub, uh, a uh, an Italian sub, and a chicken parm all day long. What's a? I think I've asked you this before. What's a? What's their breakfast sub? Uh, it's pancette, mm-hmm. egg, fucking and pancette. cheese. Fuck you, pancette, egg, and cheese. It's uh-huh. so good. Pancette, egg, and cheese. Okay. Yeah, it's very good. We're we're when we send out for breakfast, it has to be THB because Crosby needs to have his uh, usual, which mm-hmm. is egg bagel, mayonnaise scooped out. Nope, egg bagel, mayonnaise, two patties of sausage. Oof! Then you're done. <laughs> he's, a, he's a grown boy. Yeah, he he's gonna be twelve years old tomorrow. Oh my lord, motherfucker! Jesus Christ! Stop growing. Preteen. Oh God. He's actually going on a kind of a pseudo date tomorrow. Weird. Yeah, and we're taking him, so we're the good parents. Uh, You're going to the North Point Mall, and you know, gonna follow him around. To, no, we're not going to, to North Point, but we're going. <laughs> we're going to. We're going to see Ant Man all together the, as a family. With a, we're going as a family with a friend that he asked to go. Mm-hmm. So, gonna see it in 3D or 2D? 2D. I'm. I don't see shit in 3D. Oh, okay. Ooh, all right, fancy man. No, I just don't. I just don't enjoy it. Like, unless it's unless it's shot in three D, I don't prefer it in three D. <laughs> all right. The con the conversion never works for me. Okay. 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 <laughs> no, I just so I just I mean I, honestly, Ant Man in three D. This one probably would be amazing. It would probably be super fun to watch. But like sometimes it's just kind of like. Ugh, man. I think it's uh, it's done. not exactly highly rated currently. I think it's oh like, no, it sounds like it's terrible. It it's hovering around the fifty percent mark on there, which sucks the because they're, they're usually pretty good, right? Like the first Ant Man's good, the second Ant Man, you know, okay. I enjoyed it. Yeah, 
This one seems like everyone hates it, so I don't well, know. I think what's happening is that everyone hates Phase 4. Yeah, there's just like, a backlash against... And it's because yeah, it's not great. Well, and also everyone's getting kind of burned out on the MCU as, as, a, as a whole thing. Uh, right. You know. And it's all tying into a bunch of TV shows that they made us watch, and which I enjoyed. <laughs> they but They made like, us you know, watch. <laughs> I, made, I made us watch. <laughs> I meant. Uh, but yeah, like... You know, the first Ant-Man's great, like probably the best use of a Cure song in any movie. That, not that there are many <laughs> Cure songs in a movie, but, you know. Well, also, it, it wasn't like, you know, feeding into the, the canon. It was just right. kind of like, eh, it was a heist movie. Yeah, uh, it was a heist movie. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Some and stuff happened. The second movie, I don't remember too much. Well, the, en- the ending was, did like, feed into find- the canon. Go find the mom, right? And then they right. get they get they get zapped, right? At right, the but end. the ending is feeds directly into like uh, uh, end game slash right, 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 Infinity right. War. So yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I, I like Paul Rudd. I'm always a fighter for that guy. He's funny as shit. And I tried to describe. So okay, uh, Super Bowl. There was the. Mm, mm-hmm. Did you watch it? I did. We did. You watched the commercials. So there was the commercial, (laughs) uh, the Clueless commercial with Alicia Silverstone, right? Yes. So, you know, Crosby didn't get the reference and we were just kind of laughing at it. And he was like, what is that? So we were, (laughs) we were describing it to him. We're like, oh, that's like a movie that's like, you know, I guess 20 years old. 28 years old. 20 years old. Almost 30. Yeah. And I was like, that was like a movie that was almost, it's almost 30 years old or something. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll show it to you. if you want, it's nothing bad. But what's funny is it's one <laughs> of it's one movie. of Paul Rudd's first movies. Yeah, and I was like, he looks exactly the same. And he's like, what are you talking about? I he he, de- a- he definitely looks young. Oh, he like, definitely yeah. looks younger, but he looks exactly the same. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, I showed him a picture. And he's like, wait a minute, how long ago was that? And I was like, <laughs> almost thirty years. And he's like, no, it isn't. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it is. He's like, stop. <laughs> And I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Well, all, what's weird is us, I don't think Paul Rudd is 50 yet, but like a lot of the other. Oh, he's MCU, over 50. Is he really? I, I think I so. Would, uh, Both of I us are like would, to the Internet. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I'm doing it right now. <laughs> he's older Paul, than I am. Paul Rudd is 53. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like, I know. Because like I, for some reason, thought he was 15 or 19 when Clueless came out, which would have put him at like 47. But right. No, 53. Okay. Yeah. Which is fine. Either way, which is, which is fine. It is bananas because you look at all these, quote, action stars, you know, that are in the MCU. Uh, and with the exception, you know, very few of them have like bowed out. Uh, so they're all like in their 50s, firmly in their 50s. Yeah. And they're, they're in these fucking action movies where it's like, granted, they're all in front of green screens. They're not doing a lot of actual stunts. But. I, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, can we can we please start moving along to like the next generation? Oh, totally. Of actors and actresses. And Paul Rudd took forever to get into the Ant Man. Right, like, exactly. That was his he first. Just, like, he basically just got started. <laughs> right, because he was a comedian. Like, right. My wife loves Paul Rudd. He's great. I think she would straight up like if there was one person I think in this world that she would leave me for, it would totally be Paul Rudd. <laughs> Did you ever see that movie? It was one of his earliest films where. He was some college guy who was kind of ugly and this this like girl started dating him and started like pressuring him into getting cosmetic surgery and it turned out toward the end of the movie that he was just her like art project. No. And I, I it was called like the object of my affection, I oh, think. Oh god. Yeah, it's it's a good movie. Yeah, uh, that sounds horrifying. <laughs> yeah i uh, any listener I, I recommend go seeing it if oh wow i've never it. seen that it's cool i'll check yeah. that out um but yeah so we're going doing that it's the boy's birthday we're gonna have fun you know whatever uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> like i no, i'm excited about his birthday i'm not terribly excited about being like all right let's take you and your girl who's a friend this girl who's a friend oh, i'm gonna come up with a birthday rap for crosby when we do the podcast on saturday he would he would think that's the coolest thing in the world. Would he though? No, he would because he's absolutely clueless of anything that's cool or not cool. 
my hey, son is coolness is in the eye of the beholder. No, absolutely. Dude. I think my son is the coolest person in the world because he is so fucking uncool. It is amazing. <laughs> and I'm not saying that as a bad thing. I, he literally is absolutely like a blank clueless. Like he just lives his life and what he thinks is funny and cool is cool to him. And he doesn't give a piss what anyone thinks. Yeah, think but he hasn't, even, he hasn't even hit 13 yet, so give right. him some time. Well, he well, might, he no. may change his mind. Dude, so many other people in his, like, there's this rush to be adult, even at fifth grade. I mean, he's in sixth grade right now, but even last year, all these kids were like, instantly, the girls are wearing makeup, and the boys are like, fucking doing their hair and shit, and it's like... That's Every, nothing new, John. What do you, what do you, what, 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 I don't what? know, man. Like, I never did that. I, I, I okay. knew so many people in middle school that were like, girls especially, that were like, I'm wearing makeup now. Yeah. Because I'm, I will I'm an say, adult. I will say as someone who has been consistently cool <laughs> since probably 1994, mm-hmm. before that, I was so absolutely uncool because I didn't know what to do and I tried to fit in in places that I knew weren't going to fit in and it was just a mess uh, I, I appreciate that he doesn't try to fit in you know what I'm saying oh yeah I, I, like, I'm similar like I never tried that hard uh, but when I was in high school then it was like, well, you had to be with some group of people. Right. And it was, you know, the people that sat in the corner in the, the cafeteria and listened to punk music. Uh, and then I was fortunate enough to start listening to ska because that meant I could just wear like uh, dress clothing <laughs> right. and, you know, look like I belonged to that Learn scene. the trombone. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I never had to wear like spike collars or that bullshit. Like I could just wear like khaki pants and be mm-hmm. like, yeah, I listen to ska. That's fine. By the way, I got a question for you. Are you familiar mm. with the skunks? I, yeah. I mean, no, not, not really. I mean, I know the they're a little name. bit, they're a little bit before your time. They're a local band. You should check them out. Their first uh, album mix nuts is I think mm-hmm. one. I've heard, no, I definitely heard that. It's yes. a really good early nineties ska album. And probably the only Scott album I've ever consistently listened to. Most I of saw the ska I that, saw them when I was sixteen, and I was like, "This is amazing!" Right. Most of the ska that I I was exposed to, which was air quote local when I was that age, was DC ska. Sure, because DC for whatever reason had a really strong ska scene. Um, whereas Baltimore was mostly Baltimore like didn't gutter. at all. Yeah, no, it was it was like gutter punk shit. Most that of was, the bands that you saw probably weren't even from DC. They were probably from like PG County or, or that. Yeah, P, PG had a giant ska thing. It was really weird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, I which agree. is where the it skunks were from. <laughs> yeah. It was weird. <laughs> what a weird tangent. Um, but yeah, yep. I'm I'm proud of my son. He's uncool, but he doesn't give a shit because he actually is cool. That's the, what I'm saying. Okay. Um. Let's get back to it. Uh, was that was that and, good with you with the grind your gears thing with the lasagna? Yeah, that's basically all I got going okay. on: chicken nuggets and lasagna. Um, I'll I'll back I'll back run this then. Okay, so since it is his birthday, um, tomorrow we're gonna go just to the movies. I think. Uh, Saturday we're going to this brewery. To see some shitty podcast, uh, I don't know a lot about it. Maybe you can it's tell the, me about it. The the, the oh oh, <laughs> uh, it's a little show I've heard is called the CTB show. Mm. Uh, what does three, CTB stand for? Three cis white dudes apparently mm. are hosting a podcast at the yeah, top. Wrong on that. Yeah. The the second floor at checker spot at like seven. Yeah, whatever, man. I don't know. I believe it's seven forty. It's a very specific time that no, I was that, given. No, 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 six forty. <laughs> six forty. Sorry, six forty. Yes, I'm sorry, six forty. Yeah. Well, that's just when you should start showing up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway, we've been doing this podcast for ten years at this point, so we're we're kind of just all doing a. Hey, it's been multiple years since it's we've done been. a live show. Yeah, a couple of years since we were able to do a live show, and now it's like, all right, well, let's do this. That's cool. Ten- yeah. Do you like what? do you like live shows? 
Um, yeah, I, I guess it's like what I hate is the anticipation of it. And then once you get out there and you're like, oh, it's just 15 of my friends sitting there. That's yeah, fine. It's just it's just sailing. There you was know- the one time that we had we had a, a crowd of over 50 that I was like, whoa, I don't know most of these people. The and last was- one I went to, there was a big crowd. Right. Yeah. At the the old reverb, right? Yep. I got yeah. I got a bag of uh what do you call them uh um <laughs> butt plugs <laughs> there it is pl- oh, that's right <laughs> had, oh oh oh, oh. I, I had my so, finger with the whole thing like <laughs> that must have been like the holiday show right? yeah 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 it was the it right was the we did a, we did a white yeah white elephant thing or yeah. whatever oh yeah 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 okay I remember that now yeah yeah that was the last one and that was. Uh, uh, December ish of t- 2019. Yes. So holy shit. I mean, yeah. you know, everybody kind of forgets like what got lost during COVID. But yeah. that when you when I'm like, all right, we've been doing this podcast for ten years, and this is the first live one we've done in almost three years. Farts. I feel bad when I think about that episode because I feel like I was the dickhead drunk just yelling stuff at you guys <laughs> the whole time. I don't I know was, if it was. I was galactically drunk. When- I don't know if it was that episode or a different show, live show, because I know we've done two at that same venue. But you were you were at the time uh, your shut up was to that one donut lady who did the <laughs> she did the blackface. That donuts. was the episode. Yeah, that was the episode. <laughs> But I kept chiming in like a dickhead because I was in the front row sitting next to Hannah. Oh, I, just, yeah, I don't. It was I, I don't. Uh, no, I felt bad. It didn't really. Uh, it didn't affect. The, if the, the, if the I was you, I would have thrown something at me. <laughs> um, I, I mean, yeah, no, whatever, man. But I don't. That's all part of the fun. Yeah, I guess. But I got go. I was so galactically drunk, and then we did the exchange, and I was like, "Oh, I got the okay butt plugs. Like, I got butt plugs. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, guess I and don't you know. Still what I'm have gonna, them today. Yeah, I guess I don't know what I'm doing with those. Well, um, you're going to have to hand them down to your son for his uh, 13th birthday because that's when he's God, a man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, here's these used butt plugs. Sure. You just got to gently wash them, you know. Oh, with, uh, gross. A little bit of borax. Um, and he- Scrub out the stains <laughs> on that plastic. So we're doing that on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um. And then su- Saturday night, we're going to, after your podcast, we're going to take him out for dinner. Um, I think we're going to go to The Dive, uh, which is a new-ish restaurant. Oh, yeah, in over in Canton. Yeah. And uh, we've I've already gone there and eaten. Uh, we we had a dinner thing there a couple weeks ago when the kids went on a, like, a s- sledding trip with school, like a tubing thing. Uh, and... They have a bologna sandwich, which was really good. And they also have a Taylor ham sandwich, which is really good. So like just, okay. it's just, you know, bread, meat. I think on the bologna sandwich, they had lettuce. And then on the Taylor ham one, they didn't. Fancy. It was weird. Yeah. But either, either which way it was, they were still really good. Um, they have fried chickpeas, which were awesome. But okay. everybody that got um, pizza, and and a couple we were with got the pizza, and it smelled like, like, and it looked amazing, and they loved it. I never got a slice because I just didn't ask. They would have given me one, but I was full. Question about the the fried chickpeas: Are they the crispy fried chickpeas? Yes. yes. Yeah, I love that yeah. shit. Yeah, and a little spicy, a little salty, a little sweet. Yeah, they were. Uh, really yeah, good. on my my side of the. But the also hood. not. Super crunchy, the little chew. Right. Uh, yeah, on my side of the area, um, we've got this place called Hershey's, which is a very I don't know, very successful. Oh, it's great. Pizza's amazing. Italian, Food's yeah, amazing. Italian pizzeria slash Love that place. you know, Italian food. And they've got a an appetizer that is a, a grilled octopus tentacle with fried chickpeas in a you know, a drizzle. And it is one of my favorite fucking appetizers going. By the way, shout out, shout out to uh, Josh uh, Hershkovitz. Mm-hmm. Fucking yeah, they've been in that spot nice for a very long time, and they are not dickheads. They're nice people. No, he's like, a super nice guy. They also run a really good bar program there. Uh, yeah. the cocktails, their, their are, cocktails are great. Or they're great. Uh, yeah. Good menu, good, good everything. Like 
Just no no notes, no complaints. Yeah, no. Every time I go there. <laughs> you know what's weird though? Like you say that, like I don't eat octopus anymore. Okay. It's uh, too because smart. they're smart. It's too smart for me. All right, then and don't don't eat any pork product. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I absolutely know, I know. But it was like the one thing that my son was like, I don't want to. I don't think I, and I'm like, because I'm going to tell you when we went and did hot pot a couple of weeks ago, I ordered the baby octopus and I just boiled the shit out. Oh no, they're great. I love octopus. (laughs) If it's done right, it's great. I put them all over the grill. I was grilling up those baby octopi. I was like, yeah, babies. (laughs) No, I I, I got no problem with anybody else eating them. I, I, I like, there's something weirdly super sentient about octopi that I'm just like, you know what? Well, just like I told you the last time we've had this conversation, you just have to get the giving octopus and, you know, you, you, you grab one, you cut off an, a, a tentacle oh, right. and, and you put it into the through. cooler and you just like throw it back in the water and, and it, it grows, grows it back. It, and yeah. it just grows it back. Yeah. You just got to have that one octopus. That in, may have been your, on my podcast, not this one. Yeah. It wasn't in mine. Uh, you got to have a, you just got to have an octopus, like a giant tank with an octopus. Mm-hmm. And then you just, you know cut its arms off every now and then <laughs> made it with other octopi. And then when it has a baby, just scoot the babies out. I mean, it gives not right? all of them, maybe like two thirds of them. Okay. That's still, you're still, you're still harvesting goddamn babies. Like, but that's the thing. They only live to be like three years old. So at some point octopi die after three. Oh God. They're yeah. They don't live long. Really? Yeah. Really? I I doubt that they they got to be like 150. Google it, bro. Google it. I'm not. I'm or uh, whatever AI at Chat GPT. No, it. I'm not. Don't listen. We don't. I'm not even gonna go. Have there. you have you heard recently about no. how Bing Bing now is yes. introducing AI chat? And I gotta and I gotta check this out. People love it. People think that their search engine is fucking amazing. By the way. Yeah. Well, I, I actually like listen. Legitimately, to- like fucking flipping out about this. I, yeah, but the big flip out I is want by. None of it. By no, by out by all of the advertisers who are worried that like all you're gonna do is go to this chat bot and gonna say or right, recommend me the perfect bike to fit into my Subaru hatchback. See, that's what and it's happened. It's gonna is- do all the product searching for you and just bring back a paragraph saying, "Here's the bike you should buy because Bing of got, these things." Yeah. Bing got shunned, and now Bing's like, "You know what? I'm burning this whole fucking thing down." Hey, I'm Bing. I'm a Bing man. Hey, remember that. What Jonah Ray? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, Jonah, Jonah Ray. Ray. He got yeah, all the Jonah fucking. Do- yeah, he got all the shit in the world Poor for being fucking Jonah Ray. <laughs> I love Jonah Ray. There is oh. a there was a convergence where Jonah Ray was like, "I'm the Bing guy," and Kumail Nanjiani with Kumail Nanjiani was like, "Yeah, I'm just the other guy that you have a show with." And everybody's like, "Oh shit, here goes Jonah Ray," and then, well, Bing. And then all of a sudden, Kumail Nanjiani became the biggest fucking person in the world. Yeah, weird. I love Jonah Ray though. He's a very nice guy. Um, yeah, he he's a big nerd. He's a good guy. No, I've talked to him a couple times. He's fucking very. Oh, funny. have you? I have. You he's ran big... into him at the bar? No, we've just chatted online. He's a very nice man. Via um, what platform? Um, Facebook, text. Like oh, not Messenger. chat roulette. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, we no. But he's, All right, he's, let's get to some nice. fucking food, John. Okay, let me let me talk very quickly. Um, um, so like I said, tomorrow night we're gonna go and do the thing at the thing, and then your thing before Saturday morning. Uh, I mean Sunday morning when I wake up, I'm gonna have to start making, or Saturday night I'm gonna start making pizza dough for mm. Saturday. I mean Sunday, <laughs> Sunday morning I have to wake up and make a birthday cake. Um, a pizza birthday cake? No, he wants it. it the, if you look on the New York Times, it's called like honey birthday cake. It's actually very simple. And I was like, oh my God, like this is the easiest cake in the world. It literally is just two. You just bake two cakes. You make whipped cream. Put the one cake down, put the whipped cream on it. Put the second cake on it. Put the whipped cream on top of that. No sides. And then just cover the fucking thing in honey. I was like, seriously, that's what you want? And he's like, no, this cake sounds amazing. And I was like, all right, dude. You just made it way more fucking easy for your dad. 
Now I don't have to make a uh, Harry Potter spell book like it did for your fifth birthday. Ouch. Oh, God. It was a lot of fondant and a lot of uh, molding and a bunch of cakes. Oh, you didn't get your bro Duff Goldman to make it for you? No, I've, got, I've had Duff Goldman make me one cake, and that was for <laughs> Leanna's 30th birthday. <laughs> and honestly, it was the last cake that won out of, um, uh, what's their place called? Charm City Cakes? Charm City Cakes. Uh, it was the last cake that won out on Friday night. Oh, no, Saturday afternoon before Monday, their show started. Oh, really? So uh, it was uh, Mary Alice was like, oh, here's your cake. Don't forget the show. And I was like, oh, yeah. When's that start? She's like, oh, it's Monday. And I was like, oh, shit. She's like, yep, this is the last cake that goes out before shit gets crazy. And I was like, so oh, cool. back when, you know, city that breeds dot com, the blog was like really, really popular. Uh, the publisher of the Charm City Cakes book sent me a copy of it. Mm. And I had not watched the reality show. And I was looking through the 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 picture book essentially mm -hmm. and i recognized that one of my friends from middle school was one of their staffers oh really <laughs> sherry chambers and i i like oh, ran into her at a uh like an event at the museum or the art museum baltimore museum of art that's what and, it's called and i was like what's up oh hey i heard you worked for blah, blah, blah. and she's like i quit there like a year ago yeah and I was like oh fuck. okay yeah, of, yeah. <laughs> so Leanna used to work when she was working for a specific uh, place for Hopkins, she was catty corner to um, uh, Charm City Cakes. And they hated the Charm City Cakes people because they would come across the street and sit on their benches and take oh. up all their uh, lunch space. And nobody from like people from Hopkins would come out and just be like, I don't. And that's, that's but that was one of the reasons I used to love to hang out at the Diz because I would sit at right. the bar because Diz was right across the street from both. Yeah, yeah, watch all the rubes like pull up in their vans and get out and take photos of this building that had tinted windows. Yeah, you totally. Could, you couldn't see a thing they were doing, but uh, yeah, you yeah, we would hang out with some of the yeah Mary Alice and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were all super nice. Like I've I've met a couple of the people there. I don't, yeah, I've never met Duff. Weirdly enough. I have not met him. Uh, I, I think I he's like I think he's an LA guy now, but I don't know. He is, but I I yeah. I think I mean I was next is to Charm him. Is Charm City at a, Cake still a thing? It's a good question because I have not been up around that way in a long time. But uh, as for Duff, like I I've been within a person or two of him at a couple of kickoff parties for Baltimore Beer Week. Oh, okay. Back when that was a thing, I don't even know if that's a thing anymore because it Charm was a, City. Yeah, Charm City's Cake. It was a big going. fucking deal. Uh. Uh, Baltimore Beer Week back in the like late 2000s, early aughts or no, late aughts, whatever. Yeah. Uh, no, now it was I, huge. I, yeah, it was big, huge. And and I that was one of the things that I got to enjoy as a popular blogger pre-podcasting was like get invited to that kind of shit. Right. You know. OK, and, so uh, if it was Leanna was turning 30, that was well, I don't want to blow up her spot. But yeah. that was, <laughs> Let's not do that. That was a few years ago um, before that was a thing. Right. Like, so, uh, yeah, it was it was interesting. But like like you're saying, no, I made him his own cake and I've made him cupcakes or cakes consistently for the let I've only I've never bought him a cake after buying Leanna's cake, which was unbelievably expensive mm -hmm. even before they got popular mm -hmm. i was like oh my god um I, I it was just like my birth it was just like my wedding like they're like yeah it'd be eight hundred dollars right and i was like i can make it for 50 <laughs> like but the, the last thing you. i'll say about those guys is like that dude got his start above the the corner bar on 27th street like the korean bar sure he was just making fucking cakes in his like apartment and no them. he's he's awesome and and if you're not a person that can't do it you should pay for it because it's what they do and i mean shit even i should pay for it because they they do shit that i can't do mm -hmm. i just try it <laughs> you know what i mean like i can make a book cake yeah, it's fine. It looked exactly like a book. It was fine. It was a spell book. It had Harry Potter shit on it. It's fine. Um, then, okay. Uh, 
pizzas for the kids for his birthday party on Sunday. Doing a pep pepperoni. And then Crosby requested, and I don't know why, I guess one of the other kids requested this, is my sausage and pistachio pizza. Okay. So, yeah, sure. So those are the pizzas I'm going to make. Then the kids are going to go and um, play Dungeons and Dragons for three hours. And that's going to be awesome. Um, uh, last week for the uh, Super Bowl, I made... Um, Crosby did a thing at school where he learned to make crepes and he was like, we need to make crepes. They're super easy. And I was like, well, it, yeah, you think it's super easy, but you need a crepe pan. And he's like, Oh, we just did them in a pan. I'm like, yeah, your teacher's stupid. Um, so I went and bought a crepe pan, uh, bought a cast iron crepe pan. And then we, I'm in my head. I was like, okay, what can I do to season this up to make it really good? Besides actually just seasoning it. And I was like, I want to make like Peking duck because I had had Peking duck like uh, a few weeks ago. And I was like, I love this so much. I wish I could make it at home. Uh, and I was trying to do Peking chicken. Right. So I was looking up recipes for that. And, and basically the reason that Peking duck is so popular is for the crispy skin. Right. Mm -hmm. And the way that they cook them are hanging uh, vertically. So when you do peking chicken at home you take a whole chicken and you basically beer can chicken it in your oven literally you know standing it up on a beer can and i was like i don't want to do that that's a pain in the ass plus all of the i i don't like breast meat because it's a sham <laughs> and i wanted to do all um thigh meat so what i did was I took the skin off of a bunch of thighs. I marinated the thighs after I deboned them. Um, and then, you know, overnight, and it was like uh, soy sauce, salt, pepper, um, five spice, garlic, ginger, right? Simple. And then with the skin, I took and bagged with, oh, no, I didn't bag it. I mixed it in a bowl with five spice salt, um, baking powder and pepper, and then, you know, mix that all up and then spread that out on racks and let that dry out overnight. So then the next day I bake the chicken by itself and then bake the skin by itself. So then the skin just was sheets of crispy, delicious skin. And then the, the chicken was, you know, once it was cooked, good to go, right? When the skin was crispy, did you put it on your face and say to your son, silence no. of the lambs? <laughs> no, because you can't do that. It's crispy. Uh, oh boy. All right. It's not baloney and it's not. You need to take some improv classes, John. As he sips a beer. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to talk longer. Um, No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a movie reference, you asshole. Yeah, no, I. It it was, but it, it turned out really well. So instead of, you've had you've had Peking duck before. Yeah, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. So instead of the chicken, I mean, instead of duck, I did the chicken. Instead of the crispy, you know, on the duck skin, I did the pre baked stuff, which was awesome because it was even crispier than on the animal. Uh skin right sure i mean it's basically chicharron right and it's right, so right, right. fucking good and and with the addition of the baking soda like it bubbles up and it becomes so much more fucking crispy it's crazy um so what i did was i took and made that was the the longest thing was making the crepes so while we're watching like it took me from before the super bowl until about halftime to make everything. But a quarter and a half of it was just making the crepes. <laughs> so I made a bunch of crepes. And then for the actual dinner, I'd cut a crepe in half, sat it out like that, like half moon. So it was hoisin sauce, chicken, um, uh, cupy mayo, 
the crispy skin and then instead of leeks like you know very finely uh chiffonade leeks i did i made uh momofuku's um uh ginger scallion sauce and then put that on top and it was fucking amazing it was so good sounds pretty good yeah and then just as a side i made uh like uh Oh no, I didn't have any sides. That was it. That's all we had. That's all we had. And we just watched the Super Bowl and it was great. Um, the other thing I made really quickly, uh, I did sour broughton because Crosby had a a thing where he had to talk about his like I'm half Polish and I'm half German, which he's not, but he had to pick two. So he picked Polish, my wife's side, and German for our side, and um he had researched sour broughton. So on Saturday I made sour broughton and he wasn't a huge fan, which was unsurprising. Cause it makes the whole house smell like fucking hot vinegar. Yeah. And it, you know, it's weird if you're not, it's an acquired odor. It is. And I thought he would like it because he likes, you know, pickly vinegary stuff, but it was a little too pickly vinegary for him. So. Yeah. Makes there sense. All right, now we're probably already an hour. See you later, everybody. Bye. Just about. No, we're maybe four, 10 minutes short. I don't know. 47. Um, all right. Let's go into news roulette. All right. I'm just going to... Wait. News roulette. We're here for the set. We're going to do some roulette. Oh, God. Um. Let's... Get on my bike. We're going to go for a ride mm. down to the tide. We're getting Maryland does two what? things, football and crab cakes. That's, uh, uh. that's not, I think. Um, I'm just going to start. <laughs> um, a sneaky squirrel causes some mayhem during a pizza delivery. Oh. Um, this is like pizza rat. But oh, I accidentally. No, I oh, can't. No. no, I can't. I accidentally uh, put this in here. That was oh, last night when I was falling asleep. <laughs> this whole this whole thing is predicated on watching the video. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. I just, damn it. Um because I watched I watched it last night and I was like, oh that's funny. But then the story afterwards was uh was the thing I actually I didn't realize I got that too. Um okay, so there are going to be soon you'll be able to try plant based poached eggs with a runny yolk. Okay. So plant-based food has taken another impressive leap with the world's first animal-free whole poached egg from Yo Egg. Um, a timely release in light of current egg shortage, the debut comes in partnership with a slew of popular Los Angeles eateries that include Real Food Daily, Swingers Diner, Coyote Grill, Flore Vegan, Vegan District, Asian eatery, junkyard dog, and more because we all know all those places because we all live in Los Angeles. Of course we do. Everything is about the fucking West Coast. And of Why course shouldn't it we be? all know those names. Like, what the fuck? Um, um, have you noticed, though, uh, I don't know if that the prices of a wing still just as high as they ever were at the bar. Oh, yeah. But the price per pound at the wholesale distributor is way the fuck down it is like down to pre-pandemic whatever bird demic levels do you go to a wholesaler for your wings dude i go to restaurant depot all the time oh okay and that's what you're talking about wholesaler okay yeah. yeah no i didn't know um i don't i don't make wings at home but i wings the problem is now that now that wings are at a price they're never gonna go down no, no. Because people are paying for it and you're going to be paying 15.99 for 10 of them for the rest of right. well the next couple of years until they go up again. Wings are now the alcohol of takeout. Like It is insane. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, in, in particular cuz like you don't need a deep fryer to make them at your house. Like you can take the frozen ones, pop them in, a, in an air fryer or you're just uh, your oven. Or that. Yeah, broil yeah. them for a little longer and they'll just be as crispy. Yeah. Without, you know, the mess. I mean, not the mess, the, the you know, the price tag. Right. Um, I, 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 I don't think I'm ever going to get them again at the bar. We, we, we paid $15 the other day for eight wings. That's insane. It is. Like, it's, it's absolutely fucking nuts. insane. 
and it's not worth it. It's and not. they weren't even that good. And it's not like at the most they should be fifty to fifty cent a fucking wing. Like it's crazy. <laughs> at the most, it there's no shortage of wings. They're I mean for a little they're while they're killing was. millions and millions and millions of chickens a day. Like it's not a thing. Like it's a made up thing. There's there's a surplus of chicken wings somewhere, and they're just not telling people. All right, so I have questions about these uh, these synthetic eggs. Okay, uh, pl- let me whatever. let me let me go on with my spiel for a bit. I need to know what the runny yolk is. Made. Okay, that's what I'm about to say. What makes this product stand out from other place pa- plant based eggs on the market is that the feature uh, is an actual runny yolk, while retaining the authentic taste of the original. Yo eggs poached eggs is mainly made using chickpeas and soy along with other non-GMO ingredients. Unlike chicken eggs, yo eggs, <laughs> yo eggs, not my eggs. I'm sure that's why it is. <laughs> um, is more sustainable and delivers the quote whole egg experience that many consumers and restaurants are seeking. According to a study uh, pantry and larder did using Google Trends. The fuck does that mean? Um, Americans enjoy consuming boiled eggs the most out of other types. Oh, that's interesting. Basically, Yo Eggs has the answer to the egg inflation, blah, blah, blah. No, they don't. No, they don't. These fucking eggs are not going to cost less than a dozen oh, eggs. Oh, no, they're going to the be store. No, they're going to be way more expensive. Um, sure. Um, Chef Yosifa Ben Cohen is the culinary mastermind behind Yo Eggs and created the poached egg for everyday recipes like Eggs Benedict, Eggs on Toast, Egg Bowls, Mm -mm. Chilaquiles, and more. Moving forward, her goal is expansion that includes Sunny Side Up and Hot Women. Are these already made? These so they're just like already made. You just you like open the pre-packaged egg yolk, and egg you yolk, heat it up. Runny, oh, oh God, no! I'm sure it comes in a plastic, and you sous vide it, and then I am going to go ahead and guess that even though they say that these quote egg product, these faux egg products are more sustainable, I don't, I don't agree at all. I think like just having a chicken lay a fucking egg. Is every bit as sustainable? Oh yeah, as, so as this, this is, nonsense, this this, is, this factory made nonsense of like a a mold being in place to pour a bunch of soy product into a mold and then heating it up to a certain point. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it looks like there's a, hollandaise inside of it. Yes, it looks like a a like a chocolate lava cake, but like egg for yeah, I'm showing him I'm showing them the picture right now yeah so, it does not look natural at all which no, is fine I don't care it looks like as an long egg, as it tastes it looks as like long an as egg it tastes, dome if it has the same mouthfeel and the same taste I don't care yeah but any of these companies that's that claim that this is more sustainable especially when it comes to an egg an egg like a beef product I would agree totally. like it takes how many, however many acres of land yeah. however much water and all the grain and all the and, food and, and all this honestly and that, it's not even that it's all the cow farts that's the really bad part sure that too but a fucking egg like chickens just lay eggs like by accident mostly <laughs> 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 you have two chickens like you'll have a thousand eggs within uh two months pretty much the, these the this is not a concern of mine. I, I don't need like a a vegan egg product. You fell into my trap. Thanks. Yep. I, I mean, you're put, you're welcome. I put this here just for you to fucking grind your gears. It's not it's <laughs> not grinding my gears. No, I, 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 I know, but like I, I really wanted to talk about it because I thought it was interesting, but also it's the way that they always posit this shit is like Wait, here it comes. The future's coming and you don't even know what your eggs are about to be fucking egged. And it's like, no. I, I think I, if we I, could I, ever get to the point where like a Beyond Meat product, which tastes and feels like a very similar thing to a beef. And I enjoy Beyond it. Meat. Like, I, I yeah, enjoy but it's, all it's that too stuff. fucking expensive. It, it, it is. Oh, yeah, like, of course. For for for, let's say, underprivileged pe- people. They're never going to be, they can afford, well, they could afford eggs. They can afford eggs again, but like, there's no way that a dozen of these eggs isn't 
under eight dollars. Correct. There's it's, no it's way. A, it's a designer product. Yes. It's bougie. Uh, That's why they didn't put a price point in it. Like I would be willing to say that a dozen of these motherfuckers is probably going to be around ten. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's, it's still not as basic and or straightforward and or as an egg. Quite frankly, good as a fucking <laughs> yeah. egg. Yeah, yeah, as an egg. <laughs> so yeah, there we go. Next story. <laughs> Okay, um, uh, okay. I'll let you choose because I told you I was gonna do a little bit of a roulette for you. I'll Evan's just... choice. Okay, New Jersey Italian restaurants. One. Okay. Okay. Um, Super Bowl injuries two. Mm. Starbucks fucked up. Uh, squirrel pizza. We talked about egg, egg yolks. <laughs> All right, I'm going Jersey. Hold on. No, not done yet. Okay. Um, McDonald's being voted second worst date place in the world. Uh, Excuses for canceling restaurant reservations. I saw this headline, so let's go for this because I didn't read on, the article. The last one is... Oh, my God, John. Yeah, I know. I overpacked. Um, uh, hold on. I'll leave this. I'll leave the other one for last because... That's the one that I really wanted to do. So, uh, McDonald's or no, the canceling, uh, yes, res- yes reservations. Yes. Okay. This is an easy one. Cause it's kind of silly. Um, so everybody makes reservations. I, I'm, do you, do you, are you a maker and taker backer of reservations? We literally did it two weekends ago when we had for restaurant week uh, uh, reservations to go to Gertrude's. And then a friend of Hannah's texted her and said, hot pot question mark. Mm. And we just right. I, we called him up, said, hey, something came up. We're canceling. And they were like, yeah, thanks for letting us know. How um, how how far ahead did you let them know? About an hour. And oh, half. my God. Really? Oh, that's terrible. You're rotten motherfuckers. OK. Um, what was the excuse? It's Gertrude's. I'm sure lots of people would have, you know, filled the filled the slot. What was the excuse you gave them? I just said something came up. Okay. Um, and they didn't charge you. No. No, because okay. fuck that. I what? No, this is on open table. We're not giving them a credit card. Sure. Um, I think a lot of places. I think a lot of this article pertains to New York slash L A. Mm-hmm. So, um, a whopping 71% of Americans would never pay to cancel a reservation mm-hmm. at a restaurant, according to Seven Rooms, a restaurant tech platform that surveyed thousands of, of Americans. Instead, they choose to give the res- reservation away. Okay. Which makes sense. Yeah. Um, beg for a refund or just strip lie. And usually lie is what most people do the survey the team at seven rooms shared with food and wine was carried out in collaboration with YouGov to explore the lengths americans will go in an attempt to avoid paying cancellation fees um quote when a diner no shows it can be devastating for a restaurant unquote josh todd cmo of seven rooms says uh quote not only do they miss out on revenue but they also miss out on the opportunity to show that a diner has an incredible hospitality experience. Oh, God. Oh, God. Unquote. Yeah, that's stupid as shit. Like, go fuck off. Um, still, even with the threat of fees, diners will cancel plans. According to a survey, 20% of the respondents will fake a medical situation, while 21% will use family emergencies and is, as an excuse. Um. But a little bit of a good news is 35%. They changed their current plans to make the reservations on time. I don't know what that means. Like, does that mean like, oh, well, give us another hour, I guess. Cause I'm sure that happens where you're like, oh, we're, we're not going to make it. So we got to cancel it. I don't know. And 55% said they'd give the reservations away to a friend, which I don't know why you can't do that. Like, you know, if someone showed up and was just like, or, or you called ahead and said, Hey, we can't make it, but our friends, 
I'm assuming most restaurants would be like, no, they weren't the ones that made the reservation. No, no, so. you don't call ahead if you're going to hand off the reservation to a friend. You just say, my name is XYZ. Uh, yeah, this is dog shit. Yeah, but um, what happens when you go to pay and you're not XYZ? What? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> well, what happens when you go up and say, hey, I'm John Hauser, and you're not John Hauser? And at the end, you, you got to give... Who is going to do that other than the person that knows that you have the reservation? I don't know. Okay, so something like this happened in Baltimore probably like a year, two years ago. Maybe it was pre-COVID uh, where there's a certain restaurant group in this city that mm-hmm. is a bit unpopular politically. Mm-hmm. And people were going online and bombing their reservation slots. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, and right. they, they finally had to stop taking online reservations and requiring a $50 deposit. Oh, wow. Seriously? Yeah, because they were getting they were getting that hammered by like people making fake reservations. Oh, that's right. Because they were that unpopular at the time. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, whatever. Uh, but you know, most other cities don't have <laughs> politically well, think, unpopular restaurants. Yeah, well, that's I guess. true. I, I, but also, I think a lot of places take reservations through apps, sure. and a lot of those apps will ask for the reservation fee. Hell no, fuck no. Because I know this, there's look. A, I understand what that article is saying about like quote revenue and this and that and the other, and restaurants are a business. But I'm sorry if you're relying strictly on the reservation system as a C, uh, as a means of revenue. Uh, no, that's that's well, you, I, you are either at the very top of the levels and then that restaurant maybe has the right to expect some sort of deposit or you're full of your own shit. I think a lot of people, a lot of restaurants became reliant on reservations during covid or that. Yeah, because they only had a certain amount of things. And they could only, you know, fit people in as they reserved. So, but I will also give you a a very solid reason for why, like, a deposit system or a credit card on on hold would outcrop from like the pandemic. And I'll give you a very real world, non politically connected you know, restaurant group example sure. is that I live right next to a, uh, a, a public pool. Okay. And during COVID they started doing this online reservation system where it was like, all right, we've got however many slots we've got this capacity, uh, go online and reserve your spot for your family or your, you and your friends and this and that. And people just flooded the fucking it's site ridiculous. And, That's- and booked up all the slots. And then, 95% of them didn't sh- even show up. They just wanted the option to go. Right. So, you know, there's this possibility that people are like, maybe we'll reserve a table for this time period and this and that and the well, other. Yes. And then we'll completely flake out for no other reason than we don't feel like. And that. that's a reason that a lot of people are doing fees because there's a very bad trend lately uh, with, I'm assuming whoever's dining these days, I don't want to say younger people because you can say it when you say younger people, they all complain they don't have money. So there's a certain contingent of people out there and and it could be anybody, honestly, that they book four to five places nightly. Sure. And then just pick the one. Right. I don't, I mean, and I don't think that's a majority but there are obviously enough people doing that. No, but enough enough people doing that. Once you realize that people are doing it, other people join in on that shit, right? Like, it's it's like a TikTok thing that I've heard about. Yeah. That like people see the TikTok. It's like, oh well, if I want to get my choice of places, I just gotta book them ahead of time every night of the week, and then I can figure out. What, and nobody goes out to eat. I, every I have a very simple sim- simple way to solve this. Like, just take away the app reservations. You have to call. You get, you got to call. Or you but have nobody's to send gonna an email. do that. Like, it's Fine. easier for the it's easier for the app to do that, right? Like, no, 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 no. Then no, you got to no. hire a person to fucking just man the phones all day. Oh no, a phone. Ah, you're standing there doing stuff already. Like, people don't like phone. answering phones, dude. Doesn't matter, John. Like, if you <laughs> if you're taking the if you're taking this shit seriously, like, and you actually want to get no, a reservation at a restaurant, you there, can do it. There are restaurants that I've, I mean, back in the day, or even. 
lately I was looking at a place. They only take reservations between the hours of blah and blah. And you call and you make a reservation. Yeah. And, and going back to the really high end places, like, do you think they're on open table? Probably not. I'm some of them are, some of them are, even if they are the higher, the higher end places have their own system. So, oh yeah, their own website or whatever it is. But I'm just saying like, yeah, these TikTok knuckleheads like, right. I mean, it, you know, it, it, it it encourages bad behavior. Yeah. And, and we, we, as a society, like we, we have encouraged this kind of bullshit for for the longest time. Oh, totally. I mean, I would never do something like that. It's lemming bullshit. Like, so like one of the things is like, people are like, okay, I would be fine being able to cancel whenever I want, as long as I paid $10 or under. And that was one of the things that came with this report. Right. So, but still like for the restaurant, they get $10, but do they get $10? They probably get maybe half of that because the, app gets the other five or whatever you know what i mean like so it's just weird and most people like they know you're bullshit and just tell them like hey fucking you know whatever i mean there are there are restaurants that ban people you know <laughs> because they you know they've canceled too many times or you cancel like five minutes you know like hey i got a reservation in like five minutes uh sorry but i can't make it you know it's like you just fucked over like the thing they don't have walk-ins or at least they didn't used to have walk-ins at that point you have walk-ins. I think it's different now that that COVID is over, but you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah. COVID's over, but I, I still think that behavior is going to linger for. Yeah. Oh no. Without time. a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, speak- and it is shameful behavior to be sure. No, you should be an, you're an asshole when you fucking cancel that late or, you know, I understand if you're like, oh, I'm running late, I'm going to be 30 minutes late, I'm not going to make it, but I still want to eat there, and they're just like, no, we're not going to do it. It's like, okay, well, <laughs> that that's fine. I get it. Or being able to give it away to a friend, but like, how many people have friends that are just like sitting on the couch? You're like, yeah, right, right. Hey, man, I got a, I got a reservation. <laughs> do you want to go to Nabu tonight? Yeah. Yes, maybe. Well, I, but that's I the guess. thing, right? Like, is. I don't think it's mainly these giant places. I think it's just restaurants, right? So it's like, hey, I got a fucking. See, the other thing about these stories like this is like, I always think to myself, yeah, that doesn't apply to Baltimore. No, of course not. <laughs> like it just doesn't. I don't think it apl- applies to most places. That's right, the problem right. is, you know, whatever. But, you know, um, McDonald's. Let's go to McDonald's one. Mickey D's. Um, so... A couple of months ago, someone asked a Reddit thing whether dinner at McDonald's would make a good first date. Um, and then people just fucking were like, fucking dude, if you're like 12 or 13. I mean, if you're Crosby. <laughs> yeah, if you're 12 or 13, sure. <laughs> Actually, it wouldn't even be Crosby because Crosby doesn't eat at McDonald's. Um, <laughs> he's eating at McDonald's. Fucking- Honestly, he's going to be 12 tomorrow. He's probably eating at McDonald's under 10 times. Probably. <sighs> Great. I, you know, I don't want to look. I don't want to talk shit about your son. <laughs> maybe 10. His grandparents would take him when we would drop him off. So probably maybe it's definitely under 20 and I'm not bullshitting. Like that's for real. Great. 20. Wonderful. That's so great for him. Uh, hey, look, you were joking, right? So I'm just telling you the truth. <laughs> um, Someone was like, yeah, if you're 12 or 13 year old, Sure. So it turns out that's a lot. It's how a lot of people feel. So, uh, Tombola, a UK based online bingo site asked 11,000 of its members about the worst locations for first date. So this like couch this, that it's UK based, right? Right. So wait, these are UK based bingo site users. Yeah. 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 That's why I love this. It's really so that's funny. Kind of the, like the demographic. It's not really, it's not really about McDonald's because the, the rest of the answers are hilarious. That's really why I want to go through the list. So, <laughs> Oh, this is, I can't. Okay. Though 20% of the respondents said the absolute worst uh, first date spot is going to see a movie. 
What? Emil uh, McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Emil at McDonald's came in a close second. Yeah, of course. A first date is terrible because you don't get to talk to each other. Right. You're you're you know, looking you're, at the you're, screen. You're sitting next to each other, wishing you could finger each other. Right. Like that's all it is. Uh, oh. Um. With 13 respondents, 13 percent of the respondents calling it the worst date destination. What you don't think about fingering? Wait, 13. 13 percent. Oh, th- of, of the <laughs> eleven thousand. This poll. <laughs> so 20 percent of the eleven thousand said the fir- worst first date is a movie, and then coming in second was thirteen percent of respondents saying that it was McDonald's. Um, quote: McDonald's has a rip. McDonald's has a reputation for being <laughs> cheap and convenient, which gives the impression that someone doesn't care about impression impressing their date uh <laughs> unquote jessica alderson <laughs> the ceo jessica alderson yeah, oh, hello i'm jessica alderson hello i'm jessica alderson <laughs> oh god we gotta do that voice now uh the ceo and co-founder of the dating app so oh. synced told so Pumbola, synced. quote not only that but the lighting is bright it can't be it can be noisy and there are often kids around. All these factors aren't conducive to a romantic atmosphere that enables you to feel a sense of intimacy. It's, it's weird that that the okay, so like how many first dates are just like coffee dates? Yeah, right. I mean dude, I have I haven't I haven't been on a first date in, <laughs> day, in quite some time. I don't know. Like it, it, it feels like people are getting more far and far away from each other. So I don't, I don't know. Um, so here's the rest of the top 10. I I can't wait. I honestly can't wait for you to hear the rest of these. Mm-hmm. So we know that number one is the movies. Number two is McDonald's. Number three is staying home. Ugh. I mean, Hey, come over ha- to my having house. Having a person over for your first come date. over That's- to my house for a first date. That's that may be a COVID thing, but uh, but that's a psycho weirdo thing. Like, I guess if you've never met this person and we're like, if you don't <laughs> know them and you they want you to come over to their house, weird, right? Yeah, yes. Even weirder is number four, going to a parent's house. Oh, I mean, I, how how old is this person? Uh, apparently, an adult. Which makes it even weirder. I, I, it worked for Elvis. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I th- he dated I a teenager, so you she, know, was a, she was I like guess, a almost not preteen. They yeah, were like, like, "Oh, you're rich and we're poor and we live in Germany. Yes, have our daughter to take care of us for the rest of our lives. Thank you very much." R R I P Priscilla, by the way. Um. Oh Wait, no, Priscilla. Priscilla's no, still you're alive. About oh, Lisa Lisa Marie. Lisa Marie, sorry. Priscilla's <laughs> never gonna die. Um. Number five, which is, I, I honestly, okay, this is really why I was like, this fucking list is so stupid. So this shouldn't even be on the list, but it's number five. And remember, this is number five. When I get down to seven, eight, nine, and 10. Also, Mm -hmm. remember, UK. Okay. Number five is visiting a restaurant. V- visiting a restaurant. Yes. So like not eating at the can restaurant. We, can we just not go anywhere is what you're saying? <laughs> okay. Number six, which is completely separate is going Hold to on. a pub. Oh, Let, let's make fun of this. Well, Oh God. Did you just say going to a pub or a bar? <laughs> yeah. Wait, this is six, six worst or like this is no, no, this is six on 10. So number 10 is like the least worst. No, number 10 is the, yes. Number 10 is the least worst. Okay. So number six. The oh pub. Jesus. Oh my God. You're right. Oh my God. Oh my God. You're right. Oh my God. I just, Oh my God. Wait until I get to number seven. Holy shit. Fuck you. Oh number, my God. You're number, right. Because number, number one is the worst. Number six, the pub is like the most common almost. Right. Okay. So number five was restaurants. The, a restaurant. 
Number six is the pub. Uh huh. I dude, if I if I would if I, I, I think, had the I money, think. I swear to God, Evan. If I had a million dollars, I would straight up say I would give you a million dollars to fucking even come up with what number seven is and be absolutely fucking sure that my million dollars is safe. <laughs> and uh, okay, I'm just saying sorry, the UK. It's okay. Is it is it is it a like common UK thing or is it just like <laughs> it's a it common could be, nobody? It's, it's a like, common nothing. It's a uh, common nothing for a first date. Bingo hall. It's swimming. <laughs> it's fucking sure. swimming. Yeah, all those swimming first dates what that have been on. What the fuck in the Hello, fuck? you want to go swim? You won't go for a dip. It gets worse. <laughs> okay, this makes sense. Number eight is watching a football game. For them, soccer, or for us, but, soccer. But that that basically takes place at a pub. Yes, it's a giant pub. So wait, number eight is the least worst. Is sw- wait, seven is swimming. Seven is swimming, swimming. Is somehow less bad than going to a pub. Swimming. I don't is, believe these are. Swimming, I don't think these are in any particular order at this point. Swimming is somehow a normalized thing that is more popular than going to a restaurant. A pub or a restaurant. Uh. <laughs> Keep going, Watching. please. Okay, then <laughs> number nine is attending a funeral. Ah, okay. Uh, yeah, this is, list is bullshit. Please, I don't want to hear number ten. <laughs> number ten is going to the park, which is a normal thing. Yeah, totally normal. <laughs> like what the? Fuck? John, I, I'm gonna ask you a, a favor. If I'm gonna be on this show ever again, please do some read aheads. I read and- this ahead. That's why I was excited about it. No, this is awful. It's this so is terrible. Fucking great. This is garbage. <laughs> it's a bad. I mean, this is a waste of everyone's 11, time. Eleven thousand people. <laughs> and this is the top. Does 10. it give you how many? Does it give you like percentage number of? No, no, no. Not oh. well. If you do the math, then yeah, you could figure out how many people voted a funeral. Yeah, sure. Uh, or swimming, which yeah. is, I guess, is a close uh, number seven to number eight. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, from this, from four to is, ten, it's all between two percent. Yeah, this is bullshit. <laughs> all right. Yeah, pretty great. Um, it's a stupid. It's just it's just a really funny. It's a really funny, terrible list. That like once I got the swimming, I was like, who even puts that down as a first date? Like. What the honest fuck is going on well, with let, that? Let's forget this bullshit article and just say, all right, first date foods, what are the worst ones? First date foods? Yeah, the worst ones. Uh, I mean, Wing, honestly. Wings. <sighs> too much sauce. See, I don't think there are. I, yeah. I mean, people are going to say garlicky anything. No, nothing but, breath affecting. I guess it's like anything s- too slurpy that's going to like get shit everywhere or like, you know, messy potentially. I see I'm I'm a weirdo where like food is like kind of like neutral to me or I'm like, "Oh, this is like if this is this is this is how you see me, I'm going to eat what I want." You, you know what I mean? Like I don't know, that's kind of like my peacock Thing, I guess maybe I don't sure. know but yeah a lot of a lot of people would find it attractive you know to watch somebody else just housing a bowl of oh spaghetti. well that's that's a thing yeah I mean I guess yeah that's gross <laughs> okay I don't know I remember I remember when I was courting Leanna just making courting. her dinner but I already knew her and she was had been to my house a million times before we yeah I think your dinner. example is unique and yeah, yeah, stupid yeah. because no, like totally. you already knew her for like a no, no, 10, no. thousand years but like going out for dinner yeah I mean I remember going on dates with girls and just being like oh okay like what do we what, what do you want to do and it was I was so young it didn't really matter it was like barely McDonald's you know what I'm saying does that make sense yeah, yeah. Like I remember going to the fancy places and just being like, "Oh, I'll take the 
lasagna as long as it's not mushy. You know, that but getting back to this bullshit list, like also like if we, if we're instead of the UK, let's just say an uh, an example that applies to your wife, uh, Southern Maryland. Right. You know, when you're like in St. Mary's and you're living down there and you're dating somebody like what the green door is your right. Is no, your, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I remember or like Lido pizza is a good place for a first date. Like, uh, come sure, on. Sure, It's just whatever your local joint is like your options are limited. Yeah. I mean, you know, living in Baltimore and having options like, you know, certain restaurants, it's fine. But it's also, I, I I mean, I don't know. I guess like you said, like eating wings is weird on a first date, I guess. Because yeah. you're just kind of like. You know. But that's one of the, the benefits of living in Baltimore is that you have options. And not only that, but you can. But I guess it also do- just, I guess it all just also depends on what kind of person you are and what kind of person oh, you're going on a date. With? But I'm saying if you wanted to do a fancy first date, like you've got places you can go to and you are not going to have to like, sure. for instance, fake five reservations. You could yeah, probably yeah, yeah, pick yeah. one place and go to it. A- absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. We have it. Right. We have right. a pretty good, you know, aside from the murder here, but you know. Yeah. Um, okay. Speaking of murder, I'm just going to end with this because oh. this is my okay. favorite uh, story. I've killed a couple. So it's um, murder. Suspected Italian mob member. Mm. found hiding in plain sight as a pizza chef in France. <laughs> this is a great story, dude. So wait, this is a this is a European mafia member? Yes. He's an okay. actual mafia member from uh, Italy. From from Italy. Uh, from Italian. Yes. From Italian. Yes, he's from Italian. In July 2021, the French newspaper Le Progrès covered uh, the opening of the cafe uh, covered. No, I'm sorry. I read that all wrong. Let me start again. <laughs> In July 2021, the French newspaper Le Progrès covered the opening of Cafe Rosini Restaurante, uh, an Italian spot in Saint Antoine. Uh, quote Paolo Demetrio opens the Italian restaurant of his dreams, unquote. The headline read, and the accompanying article said the chef and owner, Demetrio, would be, quote, creating elaborate Italian cuisine, unquote, because that needs to be said, Um, using only the best local ingredients. Cafe Rosina, Rosini has uh, since closed, but anyone who stopped in for a pizza or pasta might have been surprised to read that Demetrio was arrested on Thursday. On top of that, Demetrio wasn't his name. And he wasn't a trained chef. According to Interpol, Paolo Demetrio was actually Edgardo Greco, a, dun, member, dun, dun. a member of the notorious... Uh, Damn it, I looked this up and I'm still gonna fuck this damn pronunciation up. Uh Andrangheta Mafia, who had been on the run for fucking 16 years. Mm-hmm. Uh in a press release, Interpol said that Greco had previously been convicted and handed a life sentence for murder of two brothers from a rival gang. He was also wanted for the attempted murder of of another mobster as part of Southern Italy's quote unquote mafia wars in the late nineties, which actually was a fucking big deal in Italy. Like the mafia went bananas in the uh, mid nineties to the mid aughts. Um, Quote, they, they blew up a lot of people. Yes, they were fucking, it was nuts. Um, Quote, no matter how hard fugitives try to slip into a quiet life abroad, they cannot evade justice forever. Unquote. Interpol <laughs> Secretary General Jurgen Stock said, quote, dedicated officers around the world will always ensure that justice will be served, unquote, because his name's Jurgen. Um, Greco was taken into custody on Thursday after a coordinated effort from multiple law enforcement agencies. France's BNRF, the Brigade Nationale de 
Registre des Fugitives made the arrest while Italian police investigators confirmed Greco's identity. According to the Daily Beast, Greco's Paolo Demetrio alias was actually the name of another Italian mobster, <laughs> which got the attention of Italy's anti-mafia police. You fucking dumb piece of shit. Yes, uh, my name is Alfredo Capone. <laughs> Come on, dude. You <laughs> named yourself after your buddy who you knew was a fucking criminal. You dumb shit face. <clears throat> after tracking him to Cafe Rosini and to another pizzeria where he worked, undercover off officers stopped in and obtained enough DNA evidence to determine that he was, in fact, the fugitive that they'd been looking for. I don't know how they got that DNA evidence, but I'm thinking hand jobs were probably involved. Mm -hmm. um, Greco uh, isn't the only mafioso to find his way into the kitchen. I love this fucking story so much, dude. In 2021, <laughs> convicted murderer and well-connected mobster Salvatore Buzzy opened a burger joint in the suburbs of Rome. The menu at Buzzy's Burgers was filled with mob references, including <laughs> burgers, hot dogs, and salads that were named for members of Rome's Banda della Magliana criminal organization. <laughs> Buzzy also noted that the menu prices were subject to change based on whether he liked you or not. Uh, quote, in this club, everyone pays. Friends, relatives, and acquaintances, he said, but prosecutor, prosecutors pay double and judges pay triple, unquote. <laughs> uh, the restaurant was short-lived, unsurprisingly, due to Buzzy's criminal history. <laughs> Quote, if my appeal... Hello, my friend. What yeah. is your name and what do you do for a living? Uh, he wasn't even trying. Uh, I'm, a, um, I'm a cobbler. You look like a law enforcement to me. Uh, triple price. Yeah. Oh, uh, wait a minute. No, no, no. You made him a dad of some shoes. I give it to you a quarter off. <laughs> I give it to you for free. Yeah, you get that. My I, friend. You uh, Let me kiss you on the cheek two times. Um, mwah, mwah, mwah. Quote, if my appeal goes wrong, I will turn myself in, Buzzy wrote on Facebook last September. No oh boy. Uh, quote again, you still have a few days to eat the criminal sandwiches, to listen to the stories that no one tells, and come in to visit me, unquote. Uh, Buzzy, unsurprisingly, is currently back in prison and facing up to seven wah, years. Wah. Buzzy's burgers yes. has. Hello, uh, Buzzy. Uh, well, this is the uh, Italian FBI. Um, uh, what's your real name? Uh, um, my name's uh, Buzzy. Uh, Sonny. Uh, no, it's a Buzzy. It's Corleone. a Buzzy. No, no, it's a Buzzy. It's a Buzzy Burgers. Uh, yeah, my name is. Um, <clears throat> Not Mafia Buzzy. <laughs> no, you're the friend that's supposed to be next to him going, no, motherfucker, you said your name's not Buzzy. He's like, no, no, it's Buzzy Burgers outside. He's like, no, 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 no he's like, fine. No, you dickhead. Your name's not Buzzy. They know your name, but you're using your real name, you dumb shit. Yeah, I, I mean, think at least, he's talking to you. So dumbass Buzzy fucking named his own fucking restaurant after himself as like an like an idiot and the other guy just named himself after his friend who knew who who he knew was a fucking mafia guy there you go <laughs> it's fucking crazy. It's beautiful it's beautiful I love it. it's so fucking insane only I, in italy yeah i guess <laughs> well france too he they were in that motherfucker was in france like, Only in France. Wah, wah. I guess they don't think I they're mean, in this wah, place wah. called. I guess they don't think they're in this place called Europe. Like, it's. It would be one thing for him to like move to, let's say, Nevada, right, and right. open up like whatever the fuck his place was called, Luigi's Deli, right? Luigi's fucking Mario, Luigi Mario's Deli, and <laughs> you know, Super Luigi's Deli. Well, he's Louis. His name is Luigi Mario. Okay. Just, okay. Let's, let's be, oh, that's true. The Mario Brothers. I forgot. Yeah, the Mario Brothers. He's Luigi Mario and Mario. Mario and Mario Mario. Yeah. 
So if he opened up Luigi Mario's deli and they were just like, yeah, that's cool. He's the crazy, like weird guy. He's got a lot of like old Italian story. guy. He just moved to yeah. America because he wanted to like start fresh. Yeah, he talks about like the old country. No questions. He's stabbed no people. And, you know, he has the weird stories about, you know, when I order a pizza, he tells me about how I garroted a guy. Why does he keep calling the mushrooms Goombas? I don't understand. Yeah, it's super weird. He's got this really weird story about his princess. He's got uh, turtle soup on the menu. He keeps saying he meets the princess, but then it's another girl who's then since he's got to get it to the princess. You got to go to a different uh, princess. He does have some banging ass music on the uh, stereo. This one song, it, it goes like this. <laughs> it's fucking <laughs> awesome. John, I don't want to alarm you, but most of those themes were based on real life music, especially that theme that you just hummed is based on a 1977 jazz track from Japan called Friends or something like that. This is easily looked up on YouTube. Okay. But it the the real life track is fucking a banger. It is great. I will I did not know that and I will look that up immediately. Before we hang up on this uh, post Zoom call, I will I will put it on a share screen for you. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, thank yeah. you for listening to the Rude Cooking School podcast. Um, check us out here and there, everywhere, Facebook, uh, wherever you want to find your podcast. If you're listening to us, clearly you're listening to us. Um, please share our podcast with your friends and family. We really appreciate it. We don't spend money on advertising, and word of mouth is very important to us. Uh Evan has his own podcast and we're about to celebrate the 10th year. Tell them about it, Evan. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you don't live in the Baltimore area, disregard this message, but if you do and you've got nothing else going on on Saturday, come to checker spot brewery, uh, downtown Baltimore, plenty of parking. It's right around the stadiums. There is tons of places to park and we are going to be doing a live show upstairs in historic uh, pig town. Uh, no, no no come on stop it that's big town don't even do it it's not big town that's like no that's just the stadium area anyway we're going to be celebrating 10 years of podcasting there um and that's about it i i have no other messages for you other than this past episode of the ctb show which is at ctb dot show oh yeah uh we interviewed a stand-up comedian who's coming down to baltimore to do a very special show at zissimo's on the 24th of this month uh, they have an upstairs comedy room that I did not know they they had the updated. The Lou Costello room. Yeah, the Lou Costello room. And they're uh, uh, going to do uh, a set of comedy with some local people that I know and, and some Philly people that are coming down. And uh, she also has a, a, a spooky ghost podcast with stand-up comedians that is funny and spooky. Um, so listen to that episode. It's a very fun episode. Yeah, it looks really cool. It was a very fun episode. So, um, yeah, that's it. We'll, we will see you next week with a new episode. And um, I'm John Hauser III. Don't yuck me yum. And don't rip my heart out and set it on fire and say, Kalima. Oh, gosh. We're back to the Indiana Jones thing. He'll be back this year. Di- you Dial of Destiny coming out this June, May. I'm going to see it the first night. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. We're going to see it. it We're going to hold hands. Honestly, it, the, the <laughs> stupid commercial gave me chills. It looks so bad. It, I, can't, it, I, I can't wait. It's, it's going to be awesome. And it made me, it made me super happy. Uh, All right. See you guys later. We love you. Peace. Bye. <laughs>